Okay, let's take a look on the information that's on pages Excel 34 and 35. So we're going to take a break from editing our document and talk about understanding relative and absolute cell references. Because as you work in Excel, you may want to reuse formulas in different parts of a worksheet to reduce the amount of data you have to retype. For example, you may want to include a what-if analysis in one part of a worksheet showing a set of sales projections if sales increase by 10%. To include another analysis in another part of a worksheet showing projections if sales increase by 50%, you can copy the formulas from one section to another and simply change the 1 to a 5. But when copying formulas, it's important to make sure that they refer to the correct cells. And to do this, you need to understand the difference between relative and absolute cell references. Now, of course, when we were moving and copying cell entries, We've been mostly working with relative cell references uh, that's on there. And of course, um, and th these are some things that you need to consider when you're thinking about uh, copying and moving uh, cells on there and using the relative and absolute cell references. And of course, you want to use relative references when you want to preserve the relationship to the formula location. And of course, when you create a formula that references another cell, Excel does not, look, uh, does not record that exact cell address for the cell being referenced in the formula. Instead, it looks at the relationship that the cell has to the cell containing the formula. So if you would click on cell maybe B12, it's not going to record down B12. It may, say, it may look at it and say, well, it's two cells above me, or it's two cells above me and four cells to the right of me. That's how, it, that's how Excel looks at it. It's not looking at it as it has to be this cell. It just looks at it as where is this cell at compared to where I'm at right now, if you are the formula uh, that's on there. And that is the relationship that it looks at, is where is it at compared to where the formula is at. So when Excel retrieves values to calculate a formula, maybe for an example on cell F5, uh, it may actually look for four cells to the left of the formula instead of for cell F5. So if you would move that formula over one, it's still going to look for four cells to the left of the formula uh, on there. So that's one key thing to kind of remember. Now this way you could copy the cells to a new location, such as cell F6, and the results will reflect the new formula location and will automatically retrieve the values uh, for a new uh, information. Just like we had before, notice that when we move the cell entries of uh, our cell formulas from one to the next, the calculations were already correct because instead of saying, oh, well, this is cells B4 to B11, when it moved over one column, that's why it kept C4 to C11, because it was saying, okay, it's so many cells above me to so many cells above me. It looked for just a, that specific range of where is it at above that reference that's on there. Now, when it does that, that's what we call a relative cell reference uh, that's on there. And, of course, this is uh, you know, because Excel is recording the input cells in relation to or relative to the formula cells. Like I said, it's so many cells above, so many cells over, uh, whatever on there. So it's relative to wherever the formula is at. So when the formula moves, you know, you can imagine it's locked into a grid and that grid just moves wherever the formula moves. Now this is the Excel default because notice that when we've copied the formulas before, it has moved. Now if we take a look uh, at, you know, just a little bit of an example here, uh, if we take a look in the formula bar here, and we see that where it says sum B5 to E5, that is a relative cell reference. Because if we would copy that down uh, on there, if we would copy that, of course that's the information in cell F5, if we copy that down to F6, that would be B6 to E6. And it would just automatically update for us, and we'd be like, well, that's really good. And in most cases, you want to use a relative cell reference when copying or moving. And that's why it's the Excel default. Uh, that's on there. And of course, uh, that's why uh, it's called relative once again, is because they're looking at where is it at compared. So it might be saying, okay, well, it's uh, four cells to the left of me to one cell to the left of me, that range that's right there. 
So when it's copied down one, it's still four cells to the left of me to one cell to the left of me of that range uh, on there. Now, on the opposite side of this, there is an absolute cell reference uh, that's on there. And you use this when you want to prefer, uh, preserve the exact cell address in the formula. And there are times when you want Excel to retrieve formula information from a specific cell, and you don't want the cell address in the formula to change when you copy it to a new location. And for example, you might have a price in a specific cell that you want to use in all your formulas, regardless of the location. Now if you use relative cell referencing, the formula results would be incorrect because Excel would use a different cell every time you copy the formula. Therefore, that is when you need to use an absolute cell reference, which is a reference that does not change when you move or copy the formula. Now, to create an absolute cell reference, you use that, uh, or you create it by placing a dollar sign before the column, or you can do this in front of both the column and uh, the column letter and the row number if you want to point to a specific cell. Or you can have what we call a, and that's what we call an absolute cell reference. Or you, we can even talk a little bit about mixed cell references, where you can either put it just before the column or just before the row. And of course, you can either type the dollar sign when typing the cell address. So if you were typing in maybe like B16, you can put dollar sign B, dollar sign 16. Or you can actually select the cell address on the formula bar and press your F4 key, and the dollar signs are going to be added automatically. And we'll take a look at that and we'll be using those here in just a few moments uh, in the upcoming video. And of course like I said there's also, uh, of course this shows us here some examples of some absolute cell references. Now you may want to refer to your textbook on page Excel 35. It's a little bit clearer than this image right here. But this shows you some copies of some absolute cell references and no matter how many times you would copy that, anything that has a dollar sign in front of it is not going to change. So I could copy that up, down, left, or right, and that cell name or that cell uh, right there is not going to change. And of course, like I said as well, there is mixed references as well. And sometimes you, uh, when you want to copy a formula, you want to change the row reference but keep the column reference the same. Now this type of cell referencing combines elements of both absolute and relative cell referencing, and that's why we call it a mixed reference. And for example, when copied, a formula containing the mixed reference C$14 uh, would change the column letter relative to its new location, but not the row number. In the mixed reference $C$14, the column letter would not change, but the row number would be updated relative to its location. Now, like an absolute reference, a mixed reference can be created by hitting the F4 key, or you can just type in the dollar sign. And of course, uh, to get that, you'd have to hit through your F4 key. So the first time you'd hit your F4 key, and this is what we call cycling through it. The first time you'd hit your F4 key, it would make it an absolute cell reference. Then the second time you'd hit your F4 key, it would put the dollar sign in front of the row number, uh, but not in front of the column. And then the next time you would hit it, it would put it in front of the column, but not the row. So you may want to play around with that just a little bit to kind of experience that. Now, in our next video, we're actually going to be working with uh, copying formulas with relative and absolute cell references. So, um, go ahead and bring back up your document, and, uh, or not your document, but your spreadsheet, and uh, you can prepare to uh, edit this. And so, we can actually see this in action, because a lot of times, it does make a whole lot more sense when you're actually using it, versus kind of taking a look at this information, because usually most people kind of gives me the deer in the headlight looks when I take a look at this. It's like, huh, what? What are you talking about? And then when they see it, it's like, oh, okay, now I see it working. So uh, this hopefully will make a little bit more sense as we go in through the next couple videos. So you're ready to move on, so go ahead and move on to the next video.